In the first reading today from the book of Deuteronomy, which is part of the first five books of the Bible, known as the Torah, the most important five books for the people of Israel. And we are the new people of Israel, which is the people of God. We hear that God took Israel for himself. God so loved the people of Israel and God so loves the new people of Israel. God so loves you that just as he took the first people of Israel, he has taken you the new Israel, for himself. When we are far from God, he comes after us. Not we after him. As he did over and over again in the Bible. I want to ask you all a question. And I say you all. Did Abraham choose God? No. God went after Abraham. Did Abraham pursue God? No. God pursued Abraham. The same is true for you and your loved ones as was true for Abraham, for Moses, and for all of the prophets. God loves you as God loved Abraham and Moses and all of the prophets. And God is after you. And God is after your loved ones. God went after them. And God found them. And God finds you because God loves you and God loves your children, your grandchildren. God loves you and wants you and is after you and is after those you love that you feel are lost. God will find them As God went after Mary, did Mary go after God? No. God went after her and chose her. She was 12. God is after your children. He's out there looking for them. Did Joseph, the husband of Mary, pursue God? No. God went after Joseph. What about Paul? The one who wrote the book of Romans that we heard from today. Did Paul pursue God? You all know the story of his conversion from the book of Acts. Boom! God pursued Paul. Off of the horse, down, blinded, God went after him because God wanted him as God wants you. And God wants each and every one of those that you love, that you feel are lost. And God will find them in God's time, not in your time. The twelve apostles, did they pursue Jesus? No. Remember, part of the twelve was Judas. And Jesus knew who Judas was and that Judas would betray him. But still, Jesus wanted Judas and took Judas and took Peter, the great betrayer, the one who denied him three times, and Judas, the one who sold him for 30 pieces of silver. 
a bunch of rejects, the 12 good-for-nothings according to the society of that day because they were fishermen and God went after them and wanted them because Jesus loved them and Jesus loves you and wants you just like you are. And Jesus is after all of those that you love and wants them and wants to take you and wants to take all those you love on a journey called life, an adventure, a beautiful adventure. For as John 10.10 10 says, I have come to give you life and give you life in abundance. That same life is offered to you and all those you love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son for you. God came for you, gave his life for you because he doesn't want to be without you just the way you are. God is trying, ah, forcefully taking, huh? that's, that's where the book of Deuteronomy is, you know, that, that God is doing everything he can to get you, huh? to, be, to be after you. Let me translate all of this. God uses all sorts of ways to get us a pandemic. I'm speaking. A sickness. A cancer diagnosis. A problem in your life. A suffering. You know, God is all powerful. He could stop it all, but He doesn't. Why? The Bible says there is nothing that happens that isn't for our own good. Everything the Bible says works out for the good. That's everything. Light bulbs should be... <clears throat> we just want the good stuff. But the Bible says everything. There's nothing that happens that isn't for your own good. It's just your perception of it. God wouldn't allow anything if it wasn't for our own good. If God is love and God is my loving Father, He wouldn't give me something that wasn't good for me. Look at the life of my grandfather. Married to my grandma for 44 years. He joined the Communist Party after the Second World War in Poland and became an avowed atheist, an enemy of God and our faith. And my grandmother prayed for him. I've told you this so many times. For 44 years, for the entire duration of their marriage, she loved him so much. Never said one bad word about him to her children or to her grandchildren. He would come home drunk. And she would, from some of these communist meetings with their friends and everything else, and she would get him into bed and just say to all of us, Grandpa is sick. He needs to sleep. He's sick. He needs to sleep. Not talk smack about him, as so many of you would do. Put your spouse down to your kids. She prayed her rosary for him, hoping that God would take him in God's time. Read that book of Deuteronomy today. Huh? So you want things like this, huh? And boom, God did take him. 43 years into their 44-year marriage, my grandfather was diagnosed with colon cancer. In one week, everything changed. And this inspired me, that eight-month event, to eventually give my life to God and to you. He 
He was diagnosed with colon cancer on a Tuesday, and the following Sunday, I walk into the kitchen, and he's all dressed up, and I say, what are you all dressed up for? And he says, I'm going to church with you today. The one who made fun of us for going to church, who belittled my grandmother for her faith and said, work is my prayer. What are you doing that for? Ridiculed the rosary. The mass threatened to kill the priest in our town. That same priest later heard his confession when he was on his dying b bed. God used that colon cancer to take him, to change him, to bring him to himself. Took 44 years. How many of you have been praying for something for 44 years? <clears throat> you want it like that. But my grandma prayed. You know, God isn't some sort of an idea. We, we're celebrating Trinity Sunday today. That God is a relationship. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is a family. God is a community. Not something out there. When I was in the seminary, we, we had this uh, uh, world-renowned uh, professor, big, big shot, I won't use his name, okay, who came to give us this great retreat, you know. And uh, one of the seminarians says, you know, he, he raises his hand and he says, Monsignor, because the guy was a Monsignor, he says, Monsignor, uh, your, your Excellency or whatever, you know, using all these titles, uh, uh, I, I don't think I want to be a priest, he says, because, you know, I want to experience an, an intimate relationship. He says, I want to experience, he used other things I, I can't say because people are saying that I have to start measuring my words. So I, I bought a ruler, you know, I, I'm measuring my, <laughs> I'm measuring my words. I won't tell you what. And, and the priest looks at, at this seminarian and he says, well, you know, what do you mean you're lonely? God is always with you, he says. God is always with you. You shouldn't feel lonely. God is always with you. That was a bunch of, you know, spiritual who, who, who she, okay? That's a word I can use. What do you mean you're lonely? God is always with you. And that got me thinking, because the guy ended up leaving. Okay, he's married now. Uh, and if that was the case, Adam and Eve are in paradise, right? Because that, 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 that's the presence of God. That's heaven. And God says to Adam, I'm going to make you a suitable partner because it's not good for man to be alone. Now, was Adam alone? If this priest is saying, hey, you know, what do you mean you're lonely? You, you, you got God with you always. How can you be lonely? Come on now. God isn't... Uh, God becomes real to us in other people. That's why it's not enough to say, I just got God in my life and I'm going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, and then you commit suicide. Or you're all depressed. Stop it. You need people. You need community. Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is a person, not something, you know. God becomes real in people. We experience God. It's an incarnational God. That's Christianity. God took flesh 
and he continues to take flesh in his body. Which body? You and the people around you. My grandfather experienced God through my grandmother. He didn't go to church for 44 years. Not even when his kids made their first Holy Communion. He couldn't. He would have been banned from the Communist Party. Didn't attend their baptism. Nothing. 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 But my grandmother brought the church to him. Do you understand that? That's what you need to do in the life of your kids as well. And all those in your life that you're so worried, you know, they don't go to church, all that, you know. You be church for them. Not with words, with your presence. That's what happened in the life of my grandfather. Because God is someone. God is flesh and bones. God is incarnate. God is a relationship. God is a family. When I bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what am I saying? I want you to have a family. I want you to have a relationship. And this God who is a relationship, who is a family, came to my grandfather in the person of my grandmother. Love found my grandfather. Love found his communist heart, his atheist heart, his hardened heart through my grandma. I will never forget being in that hospital room the last week of his life as he was dying. The cancer had already eaten his body. He was in so much pain. And my grandmother was out of the room running errands. And my aunt was there with me. It was just me and my aunt Yolanta. And he was in such agony, in so much pain. He was wailing from the pain and the anguish. They gave him morphine. And it wouldn't help. He kept trying to scream. He couldn't. He had no more strength left. He was just wailing in the anguish. And my aunt kept screaming at the nurse to give him more pain meds, more morphine. And the nurse says to my aunt Yolanta, I can't. Because if I do, we will kill him. You want me to euthanize your father? The nurse said to my aunt, I can't give him any more pain meds. Nothing would help my grandfather, nothing. But when my grandma came back in the room, and she saw him in this state of pain, she saw her stashu, that was his name that she called him, Stashu. She saw the love of her life. Not the one who beat her, who insulted her, who cheated on her, who made fun of her, who belittled her, who did horrible things to her. She saw the one who wouldn't stop pursuing her when they first met, who walked five miles to bring her a piece of chocolate right after the Second World War that he found somewhere. She remembered the good times and not the bad times. She embodies God for me 
and for him, for my grandfather. Because God is someone. That's God, you know. He doesn't remember the bad things we did in our bad times. Only the good times. And my grandmother, like God, came to my grandfather in that room. As he agonized, and all she did was grab his hand and caressed his forehead. I have this image in my head right now. She was like going like this. One hand, she held his hand, and the other, she was going like this. She leaned over, kissed his head and his cheeks, placed her cheeks against his, and whispered, I'm here. And the wailing stopped. The agony stopped. He didn't need any more morphine. The pain subsided. He was so calm. He got the best morphine available to any human being. Love. He got God. Because God is love. God came to him, took him by the hand, kissed him, caressed him, whispered to him, I'm here. I love you. I heard her say that. That same God is here right now whispering to you in whatever agonizing situation you may be facing in your life. In whatever cancer you may have that is slowly killing you or eating you, that same God is here to say, in the Eucharist, in the priest, in the Word, in the community. That same God is here to say, I'm here. I love you. You are mine. I don't remember the bad. I only remember the good.
my grandfather opened his eyes and saw her. Their eyes met. He couldn't speak. They were there together. There. Together. O Boże, O Boże, Panie mój, nie pamiętaj, że czasem było źle. Wiesz dobrze, że cały jestem Twój. O Boże, o Boże, Panie mój, nie pamiętaj, że czasem było źle. Wiesz dobrze, że cały jestem Twój. I że tylko Twoją drogą kroczyć chcę. As we stand and pray.